Good morning, family. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. Two weeks from today is Palm Sunday. And then we'll find ourselves at Good Friday and then ultimately Easter Sunday. All that to say, on Good Friday, I'll have a devotional for you. It will be available beginning at noon on Friday, April 7th. And I'd be honored if you incorporated my devotional into your Good Friday observance. But we're not quite there yet. Today we get to witness a healing. One day Jesus met a man who was born blind. The story is found in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 16. Hear the word of the Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man blind from birth. Master, his disciples asked him, Why was this man born blind? Was it a result of his own sins or those of his parents? Neither, Jesus answered, but to demonstrate the power of God. All of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent me, for there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. But while I am still here in the world, I give it my light. Then he spat on the ground and made mud from the spittle and smoothed the mud over the blind man's eyes and told him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. The word Siloam means scent. So the man went where he was sent and washed and came back seeing. His neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, Is this the same fellow, that beggar? Some said yes and some said no. It can't be the same man, they thought, but he surely looks like him. And the beggar said, I am the same man. Then they asked him how in the world he could see what had happened. And he told them, A man they called Jesus made mud and smoothed it over my eyes and told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash off the mud. I did, and I can see. Where is he now, they asked. I don't know, he replied. Then they took the man to the Pharisees. Now as it happened, this all occurred on a Sabbath. Then the Pharisees asked him all about it. So he told them how Jesus had smoothed the mud over his eyes, and when it was washed away, he could see. Some of them said, Then this fellow Jesus is not from God, because he is working on the Sabbath. Others said, But how could an ordinary sinner do such miracles? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. Now, just like last week, there's a lot more to this story than we read. But you get the gist of it, right? The disciples who walked with Jesus that day had no trouble seeing. Their vision, however, was distorted a bit by the lessons they had been taught their entire lives. When they saw the blind man, it's hard to say, but it looks like the disciples had very little empathy. Here was a man who had been blind since birth. He was relegated to begging at the city gate. The disciples, it seemed, made no attempt to comprehend how it felt for a person to have to navigate the world without being able to see. And it doesn't look like they were overjoyed when Jesus restored his sight either. Instead, they argued about what caused the poor man's blindness in the first place. We could call it spiritual astigmatism. The disciples assumed that the man's blindness was caused by sin. At the synagogue, they learned that disability was God's punishment for sin. So why was this man born blind? Was it because he sinned or his parents sinned, they asked Jesus. Neither, Jesus said. This man was born blind to demonstrate the power of God. Now, when we refer to a tornado or wildfire or earthquake as an act of God, we use the same cause and effect reasoning that the disciples did. When people are diagnosed with lung cancer, their friends often say things like, you know, I've been telling him for years he needs to quit smoking, right? We want straightforward explanations. But then again, who doesn't? Nothing bad will happen to me if I do what I should, we reason. 
We feel safe at that point, don't we? We're happier with ourselves. But as you certainly know by now, life is more complicated than that, isn't it? Our spiritual vision needs to be corrected. In our story today, the neighbors of the blind man had a different vision problem, didn't they? They saw the man after he was miraculously healed, but they looked through the dark lens of disbelief. They were cynical. They did not rejoice with the man who had been cured. Instead, they sneered. Was this a trick? Was he truly blind in the first place? Or was he faking? It's natural for us to have blind spots. We're all guilty of it, aren't we? The disciples suffered from spiritual astigmatism, and they required some sort of corrective lenses, right? The man's neighbors and friends had dark glasses on. But the religious leaders of Jesus' time had even more serious vision issues. People thought the Pharisees had the best spiritual vision of anyone. But did they really? The Pharisees were blinded by their rules. They didn't care if the man could see or not. All they could see was that Jesus broke the law of Moses. And it was not the first time. On the one day of the week when Jews were not supposed to work, Jesus healed this blind man. On the Sabbath, Jews were only supposed to help someone in life-threatening situations. Now, let's be honest. The Pharisees get a bad rap, don't they? They are not as bad as we often portray them to be. They simply believed in obeying Moses' law in all circumstances of life. People were less important to them than rules. You have serious vision problems, Jesus told them. You claim to be able to see perfectly well. When you look at that eye chart, you might be able to see the letters, but your rules obstruct your ability to see spiritual things. Remove your blindfold. Another vision issue in the story is the behavior of the blind man's parents. They saw that their son had been born blind, and they saw that Jesus had healed him. There's no denying those facts, right? However, the parents were afraid to confront their fears. They had very good reasons to be concerned. If the Pharisees accused them of believing that Jesus was the Messiah, then they would be kicked out of their synagogue. This meant that they'd lose all of their friends. More importantly, they believed that God would cut them off. They would be denied salvation. The man's parents were terrified of discovering that Jesus was the Son of God. And sadly, many people today are afraid to see Jesus clearly because they fear the consequences. Now, the blind man, who, thanks to Jesus, was no longer blind, he's the only person in the neighborhood with 20-20 vision. He demonstrated what it was like to remove your hands from your eyes and face your fears. In the face of the Pharisees' questions, he remained firm. He recognized Jesus as the light of the world. He made the religious authorities angry, so they banished him from the synagogue. Wow! right? So what has all this got to do with you and with me? Well, I think the majority of us have enough spiritual vision to recognize Jesus for who he is. That's why you're listening today, right? We're aware that there are various ways of seeing. We know that a person can have perfect vision while being spiritually blind. But before we discount the Pharisees, we should admit that we too can be a lot like them at times, can't we? When we're confident in what we see, we might be in danger. Absolute certainty can be a slippery slope. We all have areas of our lives where we are unable to see clearly, and Lent is the season when God invites us to himself for a spiritual eye examination. We are the Pharisees, aren't we? We're the people in the crowd, too. And we're also the parents of the blind man. We are all three. And when we're afraid, we sometimes stand with our hands over our eyes. Lent is the season when we bring our blindness to Jesus for healing, which makes sense when we realize that the light of the world is 
Jesus, right? He opened the blind man's eyes, and he will do the same for us. I've got good news. To see the great ophthalmologist, we do not need a referral from a primary care physician. And there is no need to make an appointment. Walk-ins are accepted 24 hours a day. No insurance? No problem. Sometimes we need to admit that even though we can see, the bottom lines of the spiritual eye chart are sometimes fuzzy for us, aren't they? But if we ask Jesus, if we let him, he will touch our eyes and open them to greater understanding. Only Jesus has the ability to truly correct our vision, and my prayer is that Jesus will fill our vision fields so that we can see him and recognize him this Lenten season. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Good and gentle Father, thank you for your great love and mercy. Thank you for your unfailing grace that is always available to us. Open our eyes to see the world as you see it, and to have the courage to live out our faith with conviction and purpose. Help us to overcome the obstacles and challenges that we face, just as the blind man overcame his own physical limitations. We ask that you would touch our lives with your healing power, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual. May we be transformed by your love, and may our lives be a reflection of your goodness and grace. Help us to see. As we go about our daily lives, help us to see the needs of those around us, just as Jesus saw the blind man and his needs. May we be agents of your peace and love in a world that so desperately needs it. Give us eyes to see the best in people, hearts to forgive the worst, minds that forget the bad, and souls that never lose faith in you. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As always, thank you for joining me today. I really do hope these words were helpful to you. And if they were, will you like, review, and share this episode? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and benefit from these words. By the way, if you have a need or a prayer request, please leave a message in the comments section, and then be assured that I will be praying for you and for your need. Now this week, your job is to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love, and everyone needs to know that God loves them, no matter what, right? Remember, with Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now, receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen.